The first thing we need to do before starting the solid geometry question is to go and label the auxiliary view. We then also need to include the apex of the pyramid in the auxiliary view, which we can do by simply going and joining the opposite corners. But we are going to join those opposite corners using a hidden detail line. As in this auxiliary view, those lines would be below the view that's created by this auxiliary and we're also then going to go and label that apex and then transfer that labeling from our auxiliary view into our front view for this point here because it represents two points we're going to have a look at how this auxiliary view is going to move across our XY line and we can clearly see that point B there is going to be seen first and then point D behind it. So with that movement over our XY line we're going to label the point here as point B, comma D. Seeing point B first and then point D. Next step is to go and take each of our points in our front view and to project them into our top view. Once we've done this, we're going to draw our top view without the cutting plane included so we're going to go and take each of the measurements that we need from our auxiliary view and we always measure from the XY line to each point in our auxiliary view and then we transfer those measurements into our top view so for point D we will measure from the XY line to point D which is 4 millimeters we will then find point D in our top in our front view follow its line going into the top view and we'll measure from the XY line down and that then would be marked as point D. We'll do the same for point B. We measure from the XY line to point B which is 60 millimeters. We then find point B in our front view and we project on that line. We measure 60 millimeters from the XY line down and mark that as point B. For point A, same process, we measure from the XY line to point A, 31 millimeters. We then go and plot that measurement down from the XY line on the line which represents point A from our front view. And we can mark that as point A and then point C should also be 31 millimeters away from the XY line we then find point C in our front view and we work off of its projection line measuring 31 millimeters down off of the XY mark that and label that as point C the last point that we need of course is the apex of the pyramid which is point E we measure from the XY line to point E which is 32 millimeters and we go and mark off from our XY line from our XY line going down on the line which represents point E and we mark it as point E now that we've got all of those points marked we're going to draw in what the pyramid would look like if it had not been cut by simply joining each of the lines or each of the points that we've plotted we're not going to include as to where the lines were hidden detail on that yet
Okay, now we've got our top view complete without the cutting line included. So now we'll take our cutting line, the cutting plane over there, and we're going to take each of the cutting points and project them down into our top view. And you can see there that we're going to start at the bottom and where the cutting line hits into the base over there we're going to take that point straight down and we know that because that point over there cuts on the base it cuts line AB and line AD so when we take this point down we're going to mark it hitting into line AD as well as line AB mark those as our two cutting points then if we follow our cutting line across we'll see that the line then goes and cuts line DE as well as line BE so we project that down and we'll mark that point off on line DE and on line BE and then our last cutting point is over here and that cuts line CE so we'll take that point down and we'll mark that point on line CE in our top view once we have that we're now going to go and join each of those points using a dark line because we now know that that is our cutting plane in our top view Now once we've completed that we need to go and identify what has been removed from the original shape to see what we need to draw in in dark and if we have a look carefully at what has been cut off if you use your set square to help you you can put your set square over the part that's been cut away and we can clearly see that point A and point E are underneath the set square so any lines going from point A to the cutting points and from E to the cutting points will need to be taken out. So here from point E to each of those cutting points we know that we're not going to draw any of those lines in dark. And from point A over there to each of the cutting points we're not going to draw any of those in dark. But the rest of the shape from point D and point B is still there. You can clearly see point D and B is still there, still visible hasn't been cut off so we will include dark lines from point D and point B and then you'll clearly see that I have left out our lines that would normally go from BC, DC to B, from D to C and B to C, because those lines are sitting underneath our pyramid and will therefore be hidden detail, and we don't include hidden detail in this view. So that then completes our top view, except for one last step where we have to go and put hatching lines onto our cutting plane. And of course those hatching lines are at a 45 degree angle. Okay, that then completes our top view. Then if we want to go and draw a, a left view of the same shape, we're going to go and add in an XY line on the right over here, which is away from our auxiliary view. So if we don't have any conflict there, 
We're going to add in our normal 45 degree line over here to project off of. We're going to extend this XY line to the base of it. And then our first step again is to go and draw our left view with a complete left view that has not been cut. So we're going to project each of our points across from our front view. And then go and project each of the points across onto our projection line from our top view. And remember that we're projecting it now as if it wasn't cut, so we have to include all the points from our top view. And then we will go and project each of those points straight up into the left view. And then we're going to have to follow our numbering from our top view and our front view to then go and find the correct numbers here in our left view. So we're going to let's start with point E. There's point E in our front view. There's point E in our top view. So we will now follow point E across there and then follow point E across here onto our projection line and then straight up and where the two lines meet up top here. That point there is then of course going to be point E in our left view. We'll do the same for the others. There's point A and point A we follow across and up and then across from here where those two come together that is going to be point A. We'll take point B. There's point B in our front view, point B in our top view. We follow across and up and then across from our front view and where the two lines come together that is going to be point B. Point D as well on the same line follow point D from our top view first across and up and then point D across from the front view that would be point D and then last point C over there in our top view projected across and up and then across from our front view gives us point C over here and then again same as what we did with the top view for start we're going to join each of those points up without it being cut but in construction to complete a left view okay that gives us a complete left view now without the cutting plane now we're going to add in our cutting plane with the same process as what we used for our top view we take each of the cutting points now from our front view we project them across take that one for starters we know already that that cutting point cuts two lines it cuts line a b and line a d so we're going to follow that cutting line across onto line a d and onto line a b mark those two cutting points then move up to the next cutting point over there project that across and we know that that cuts li two lines as well it cuts line e b and e d so as we follow that across we're going to mark it off on e d and on e b and then the last one project it across as well we know that cuts line e c so we project it across onto line EC and mark it off. And then again, we can go and join each of those up using a dark line because then we know that that is our complete cutting plane. Okay, now that the cutting plane is in, we need to go and again decide as to what's been removed. Okay, and remember that point E was removed as well as point A, so any lines from point E to our cutting points will not be drawn in. 
So that line there, there and there will be left out and none of the points from point A will be drawn in either. We then know that we're still going to see point D, point B and point C because they're still visible here below our cutting plane. So we're now going to go and draw in what was left. And remember we're drawing a left view seen from that direction so we can see the whole base square still. So we're going to draw a dark line joining up our base lines which are definitely visible in this left view and then we're going to draw our other base lines up until each of the cutting points one over there and one there the rest of the line from there to there gets left out because remember point A was cut off and then the same thing on the side over here from B to E we don't draw it all the way till E because E is being cut off we stop as soon as we hit a cutting point and the same thing with line DE, again we join up until we meet a cutting point. Then we have a complete left view. The last thing again to go and finish off that left view is to go and draw in our hatching lines at a 45 degree angle. which then completes our left view and we have a complete sectional top view and a complete sectional left view.